So guys, welcome back with another video with Linksy. Well, we're gonna have an interesting discussion today. Yesterday we had the discussion about why missiles are as strong as they are. And today we're gonna have a discussion about how magic is so good and such an amazing thing. But is often seen as an overpowered and broken thing especially in single player campaign simply due to the mechanics that allow it to be so strong namely the ability of cooldown reduction the ability to have ridiculous amounts of winds of magic on higher up and leveled up heroes and of course the ability to have very low cooldowns and yeah the other I think I already said that twice I am also doing the recording while I am casting the magic Maybe I should have not done so. That said, let's get going. Well, the basis of magic in Total War Warhammer 2 is the um, Winds of Magic mechanic that we have implanted in the system. The Winds of Magic mechanic allows us to have a limit of how much magic we can cast. It's split in power and power reserve, and we have the amount of research rate. This is a really interesting mechanic in the way it works as it limits how much magic you can cast at any one moment in time by the first thing, which is if you have only a maximum of 30 winds of magic in your active pool, doesn't matter if you have 16,000 or who, whatever number you have in your reserve, you can only cast up to 30 winds of magic worth of magic at one go. Which is a really big limiter, uh, more than you would think. If you were able to have, let's say, my full 124 winds of magic cast in an instant, I would be able to nuke this army by having just an army of mages and going around the second limitation that there is. The second limitation is rather a limitation we are used to in many magic mechanisms in different games, and that is the ability to only cast after a cooldown period. Each spell also costs a number of Winds of Magic, which due to campaign abilities, campaign mechanics and items, you can reduce the cost. For example, Geld is one of my favorite magicians, because, well, frankly speaking, who does not love Geld? And Geld also gets to pretty much cast magic for free, as it is his campaign mechanic to do so. He gets really, really good um, uh, reduction on his cooldown timers, and on his costs. It is not the same as the magic cheese where you cast literally magic for free uh, using uh, glitches. This is an intended mechanism to make a very powerful uh, Lord come to life. And I think they've done a really good job at doing that. That said, it seems that the limitations of the old magic is showing here with uh, them getting to my front lines. But, as you can see, a combination of magic and artillery was more than enough to wipe out the enemy, and Geld himself having done 20,000 damage flying above the battlefield and dealing damage. Why is this such a good mechanism? Just think about it. Um, usually, Total War games have a limit of certain things. Uh, these limits usually are in terms of the uh, counters, how things work. You have the missiles that deal with the pikes, that deal with the swords, that deal with the missiles. Generally, that is how it is. Uh, swords, of course, can be anything from cavalry to infantry, uh, basically massive number of units. This is quite something, because in a Warhammer, this complete balance is gone. It is removed from the battlefield. The way that I believe that this mechanic is interesting is simply due to the fact of a number of additions in Warhammer. There is the monstrous unit edition, there is the single entity edition, and above all else there is magic. And we're today discussing magic as it adds that fifth element to the game. It adds the fifth dimensionality to a very three-dimensional structure to a recipe which was tried and tested and did very well as many people in the historical or what I would call the older style of gameplay from Total War would tell you. Having something like magic in Warhammer has added that elevation, yes? Uh, you could say so the same with flying creatures, which I would consider part of the monstrous or single entity genre. It just adds something else that you need to be worrying about, to think about on how to deal with. 
when I ever I see a magical, uh, a magic, a magician, a wizard on the battlefield, my thinking instantly goes: I need to target that uh, being down. I need to target that target that individual down because that guy will and can and will take out my entire army in one go. A good, well placed spell right now would probably kill most of my archers over there and it would not be cool not be good for me and it would not be healthy um, another discussion of this is that it basically makes your army impossible to kill if you have enough magic an argument to that would be that no that is not the case magicians tend to be ridiculously weak and very easily targeted down can they become very strong yes absolutely every single unit in this game with enough levels and items can become near or near impossible to kill but keep in mind to do so oftentimes the players have to use extreme techniques and um, cheese if one was to put it to be able to do so now magic comes in a variety of forms and manners and what I like about it as well is it is not very simple. Most games have four or five schools of magic, with Warhammer we have quite a bit. If we were to stop this battle for a split second and look the amount of magic we have available to us, we will be surprised. We have very unique ma ma faction magic such as the Wa and the Big Wa, the small Big Wa for the orcs. We have the Skaven magic which have uh, stealth, uh, plague and rust. Uh, or ruin magic over there. We have, of course, the lore of Naharkara, the lore of the deep, and deliverance of Itza, which is a very special, unique uh, magic tree delivered by good old Croak, and it is one of my favorite to use. Every time I see it being used, I wonder what will happen to the kill count of Croak. Then we have the generic ones, or so you could say. There is dark magic, there is high magic, life, Beasts, Wild, which is unique also to the Beastmen, Lore of Shadows, Lore of Metal, Lore of Vampires, Lore of Death, Lore of Fire, Lore of Heavens, Lore of Light, and so on and so forth. Each of them have unique spells. We have six unique spells for each. Some special lords also have um, different spells for themselves, uh, such as, I believe, Noctilus. He has a mixture of the two Manfred can get from lore of vampires and lore of death and that is so cool because it allows mixing and magic having dual lores of magic is something that we've seen happen and we'll hopefully see happen more in the future with warhammer tree around the corner we're also hoping to see some things that we do not have yet that is more magic especially lore of demons uh singe slanesh um, nurgle and corn will not have his own magic but i'm sure he'll have a mechanism to replace it uh, we'll have their own magic. We'll have, of course, Lore of Ice with um, having the Kislev uh, Ice Queen around the corner. And Kate will undoubtedly bring forward some powerful jade magic from that side of the world of Warhammer. Going back to the battle and seeing the amount of destruction that you can re wreck with uh, Balthazar Geld, it is indeed very high. And But that comes also with practice. You see me being able to cast spells non-stop. Gelt is our level 40 lord. He has some of the best items in the game on him, etc. But at that point, I think I've just exhausted my discussion on magic and why it is so awesome and why it is perfectly balanced. Thank you for watching, guys, and I hope you enjoyed this video. I shall see you tomorrow with more content. Take care and goodbye.